Hey everyone, let's talk about some of Dead by Daylight's most powerful perks throughout its near six year history. Let's get into it. Let's start out with the obvious Decisive Strike. This perk released with Chapter 2 Halloween with the character of Laurie Strode in patch 1.2.1. In its first iteration, this perk became activatable instantly. If you were downed and then picked up, you could stab the killer and get free of their grasp regardless of if you'd been previously hooked or if you were the obsession. It didn't matter. If you got picked up in any circumstance, you could use your decisive to get free once per trial, stunning the killer for 5 seconds. This is clearly far freer than DS's currently very restrictive parameters, giving a 60 second window after being unhooked, and disallowing any form of productive action without deactivation. Shockingly, despite the power of this perk, the first nerf in 1.3.0 was only to reduce the stun duration from 5 seconds to 4 seconds seconds. So yeah, DS has always been kinda powerful. Moving on to the flip side, let's look at the fairly simple Enduring. For the simplicity of this perk, it's been through a surprising amount of changes. It started out in 1.0.0 as pretty much the same, only with a 75% recovery, compared to its current 50%. Where it really became prominent and almost necessary though was in 1.2.1, with the release of the aforementioned Decisive Strike. With the release of this perk, Enduring was given an additional effect, a 20% boosted recovery time to stuns caused by survivor perks. This reduced the very long initial DS stun of 5 seconds to 4, which certainly makes a difference. It was then further buffed shortly after to be 35%, knocking off 1.75 seconds from the stun. This may not sound OP, but in the context of 4 DSs and insta activation, I would argue it was just that, as basically the only counter. This was only buffed when 1.3.0 came around, with DS becoming a 4 second stun, making Enduring knockoff 1.4 seconds, reducing the stun to just 2.6 seconds. With the nerfs to DS up to 2.6.0, Enduring was pretty powerful. Also remember during this time it still had a 75% stun reduction for pallets and such, compared to its current 50%. Medal of Man is a perk that may currently be one of the worst in the game, and it literally does not get used at all. There are very rare occasions when you'll see this perk come up, but generally it's just for meme builds and such. Currently this perk requires 3 protection hits to activate, and in return allows you to shrug off a singular hit. It may surprise you then, if you were fairly new to the game, that this perk used to be one of the best in the game, for a very brief period. It had its moment in the spotlight, up with Decisive Strike, Unbreakable and Sprint Burst, and you know, all the well known ones. This perk released during the Ash vs Evil Dead paragraph on the 2nd of April 2019. In its first version, it activated simply from basic attacks, and not from protection hits. So if you were playing fairly normally, this would basically guarantee its activation, and subsequently you were guaranteed this third hit before going down, typically after your first hook or thereabouts. There was a lot of controversy surrounding this perk's nerf in June of 2019, and in patch 3.0.0. There were lots of accusations flying about making the perk powerful to sell the character, only to nerf it a few months later. In the PTB for 3.0.0, Metal of Man was slightly different and could activate through a combination of safe hook saves and protection hits, a bit like current we're gonna live forever. However, when it came to live, only the protection hits part remained. It's a shame, that would have been a pretty good change honestly. Object of Obsession was a very interesting perk that used to be quite powerful. When we're talking meta, this perk certainly was just that. It didn't really get used as much as many of the other easier to use anti-tunnel, anti-slug type perks, but it did actually require you to use it fairly skillfully and be competent in chases. Using Object of Obsession was practically like having a constant flare shot up into the air, alerting the killer to your position. The perk was released with Laurie Strode on the 25th of October 2016. Quite simply, this perk would allow you to see the killer's aura if you were within 72 meters of them, and looking in their direction. Not for a few seconds, always. If you were in range, 
and you were looking at them, you could see them. The negative side to this being that they could always see you too. This was powerful, particularly in teams with comms, who could essentially relay directly where the killer was at all times, helping teammates out on loops, or notifying of an approaching killer. If you had object, it was pretty much a guarantee you were getting tunneled out of the game. Equally though, this was a volatile perk for sure, and could easily sabotage you as much as it could help you. Tinkerer used to be an entirely different perk perk, affecting the charge time of your power. This perk would boost your power charge time add-ons by 15% effectiveness. Tinkerer paired with the old carburetor tuning guide, at least I believe that was the add-on, would allow you to rev your chainsaw up insanely quickly when playing as Hillbilly. Other ways Tinkerer was powerful was with killers like Huntress. Pairing Mana Grass Braid and Flower Babushka, two wind-up time add-ons, would allow you to wind up and throw hatchets extremely quickly, almost unavoidably. The the downside of this version of the perk was that when it was used on certain killers, like Trapper, it did nothing, as there was no available add-ons for it to apply to. So although it sounds like a cool idea, it was very powerful and also didn't even work for some killers. Tinkerer's add-on increase effect was later reduced to 10% in patch 1.3.0, and finally reworked to its similar state to today's, with the only difference being that the perk activated at 85% generator completion instead of 70%. Also, the undetectable effect didn't exist just yet, so it instead reduced your tear radius to zero meters. Weirdly, this perk has kind of swung right back around to being meta again, with its current 70% generator notification and undetectable status effects. Will make it was something we've somewhat covered before in previous videos, so I don't want to go too far into it, but this perk was super busted early on. In 1.0.0, this perk worked almost on a stack basis. For each save you you got, you'd get a boost of 100% to healing speed, to a maximum of 300% for 120 seconds. Now, 300% healing speed is a lot, and basically allows you to out-heal the killer's swings, and even heal with self-care faster than the killer was able to catch up to you once more. According to the wiki, in the beta this perk had a 3 minute duration, a whole 60 seconds longer than when it went to live. Luckily, this perk was quickly altered in patch 1.0.2, to capture out at 100% and last only 90 seconds, which is essentially how it is today. And hey, it's pretty fine. Hex No One Escapes Death is a killer perk that doesn't belong to any killer in particular, but is universal. This perk today is quite powerful, but back in the early days of Dead by Daylight, it was arguably even more powerful. Either way, throughout the years it's been pretty powerful. In its very first iteration in version 1.0.0, it would insta down anyone as soon as an exegate had been opened, so a little different. It would also give you a kind of save the best for last effect, with your hit cooldowns having an 8% decrease, as well as an unrelenting effect, which would reduce your missed attack cooldown by 8% also. Further, you got a 5% increase to movement speed. In 1.0.5, this changed, with Noed only lasting 120 seconds after the perk's activation, which, by the way, I kinda think would be an interesting thing to implement in its current state. I don't know, let me know what you think of that. The timer was later removed and the perk was changed around, lowering the haste numbers and removing the attack cooldown reductions. Speaking of attack cooldown reductions, Save the Best for Last has an interesting history. There's not too much I have to say about it really though, it kind of speaks for itself. In patch 1.2.1, this perk gave you a straight up 20% reduction to the cooldown when you missed attacks, similar to how Unrelenting currently works. Then it also gave gave a base 33% reduction to successful attack cooldowns. That's like having nearly 7 stacks of current save the best for last that you're unable to lose. The only way you could lose it was if the obsession died. Still very strong. You can make this even stronger by pairing it with unrelenting, which at the time gave a 30% reduction to missed attack cooldowns, and 22% reduction to successful attack cooldowns. Kinda crazy. This gave a total of a 55% reduction to successful attacks, and a 50% reduction to miss, 15% over what is currently attainable for successful hits, and 20% over for missed. After this being so powerful, save the best for last, then got kinda bad. It had a really weird change, requiring you to be in a chase for 20 seconds to activate, but with an increased successful attack cooldown of 40%. Finally, it was changed to its current iteration in 2.1.0. Balance Landing currently is a fairly average exhaustion perk. 
Prior to December of 2019 and the 3.4.0 patch, this bug would reduce the stagger effect from falls by 75%, as well as give a speed boost. So balance landing itself wasn't so much the overpowered part, it was more the secondary effect to its primary effect. It was essentially a bonus passive effect to its main. Its main effect was and always has been a speed boost after falling from a height, but with this extra anti-stagger that was always activatable, it was pretty good. Today this perk is also pretty solid, but it's quite situational and can only be used to its full effect on maps like Haddonfield or The Game. Maps with many multi-level structures or two distinct floors to move between. So balance landing with this permanent stagger effect would be paired together with other exhaustion perks like Dead Hard, letting you gain the benefits of the reduced stagger, which made loops considerably easier, whilst also having the use of a better exhaustion perk. In December 2019, the passive stagger effect was removed, only proccing when not exhausted. If exhausted, your stagger will remain the same. This section I'm simply calling slowdown, because slowdown perks are super boring. At the same time, if we realistically look at the meta and how it's been defined, it's mostly slowdown perks. So let's just run through pretty much every one of these that have affected the meta in some form. This includes Hex Ruin, Pop Goes the Weasel, Corrupt Intervention, Hex Undying, and Scourge Hook Pain Resonance. These perks throughout the years have been incredibly strong for killers when it comes to slowing down generators. Hex Ruin has been through multiple iterations, including when it used to have this cool red skill check effect and regress your progress by 5% even when you hit good skill checks. Its current effect is probably the most powerful it's ever been though, with a 200% regression penalty when no one works on a generator. Pop's strongest state was back in 3.0.0 where it had a 60 second cooldown instead of its 45 second one not a big change, but it was just that little bit better. Corrupt Intervention has always been the same, so yeah, just its current state is pretty great. Undying went through a few changes, but has probably come out better for it. It used to only spawn one hex, transferring to an available doll totem once cleansed. It also used to lose its tokens. The main benefit was that it could transfer multiple times. Finally, the most recent perk, Scourge Hook Pain Resonance, is basically just a pop that activates after hooking something. One. It explodes the furthest progress generator for 15% regression and makes all survivors on the generator also scream. Pretty great. You just have to make sure to use a scourge hook, which is basically always available. For survivors, our most recent addition to this list is probably Boon Circle of Healing. This perk allowing a quite considerable increase to healing speeds and the ability to self care whilst in its radius. Even after its nerf from the PTB, it's pretty strong and acts as almost a constant constant point of pressure and an infinite heal point on the map. Alright, well, that's gonna do it. I do hope you enjoyed, and be sure to drop your own favourite powerful perk from Dead by Daylight's history down below. Thanks, and goodbye.